Final score, Ibrox, Celtic three, Rangers three. Pfft, opportunity lost, maybe. Celtic in the driving seat in the title race, also maybe. This is Tino with account at the kickoff show, joined here by James. James, your initial response to the draw? Opportunity missed, 100%. You can't deny that. Um, particularly getting back ahead um, with Ida. Great goal. But at three each and a draw, we are 100% in the box seat for this title, and we weren't this morning. We are now. That is a huge positive. They've got to come out to Parkhead and win, and I don't see them doing that. I thought we've got an awful lot more in the tank than we showed today. We showed it in the first half. We didn't in the second. Um, McGregor, clearly obviously not match fit, was a big part of that. So I think it's a huge result. And the biggest thing for me is Rangers players celebrating at the end. That is such a misread. Such a misread. If you think you've got anything positive to take from that game that you managed to salvage not losing the title today, you've got it all wrong, lads. I think you might be right. There's a lot of folks, so we started a wee bit late. We were going to start at quarter past two, but listen to a few of the, the interviews and stuff. And you've got quite a lot of folks in our comments here, really deflated, kicking the teeth, all that kind of stuff. And on reflection, you know, based on where we were at half time, I can understand that to an extent. But if you just take a, a wee step further back, Squad draw suits Celtic to a huge extent. The bottom line is, James, six games to go. Won them all, including beating Rangers at Ibrox. You're good to go. It's as simple as that. So, you know, if anyone who's deflated today, do you not fancy us beating Rangers at Parkhead? Because I certainly do. So as long as we do that and take care of the rest, assuming they do, which is no given, not given that we do, but I think we will, then you've got to think that's a massive result. Not That was a must win for Rangers and a must not lose for Celtic. And that's how it's transpired. Yeah, that, that was a chat across the board. Certainly anything positive for Celtic, draw or win, uh, was going to be good. You've got to win your home games when it comes to the, the Glasgow Derby stuff. And Rangers have now lost two and drawn one. And it's not it's not title winning for them. That's the bottom line. And Assam called it pre-match. You know, me, you and Paddy all went for a win. Assam's called the draw. And at half time, you wouldn't even entertain the draw. But as I say, I think bigger picture thinking is required. This is where I think Brendan Rodgers really earns his pennies. He'll have a team that are probably feeling a wee bit down, given the lost opportunity and the fact that Ida thought he'd won it, you know, near the death. But I think he now earns his pennies by re-motivating his team, getting them back in the bus and just pushing the, the reset button and, and realising where we are. And at a time where the narrative has been against us, we've been so up and down. As you say, we're in the box seat. It's all there for the taking. Before today, you know, Celtic had the title destiny or the destiny of the title in their own hands. And that remains the case right now. It remains the case, but, you you know, more so than that, you've, you've taken Rangers' ability to win the title off them because the game that is the, the, the fulcrum game, the pivotal game, is at Parkhead. And that's where we're strongest. Um, I agree, you know, Rod, Rodgers is now going to earn his pennies by showing the players that, that this is a real positive. But he could also have just done that half time and sent them back out to finish the game. Um, you know, we'll, we'll get into it, I'm sure, but it's as poor a second half as it was a fantastic first half from the players. Concerns around how gassed they looked. Um, I think bookings for Coon and Johnson really cost us in terms of how cautious they needed to be throughout the game. Maida maybe a wee bit as well. But so many players looking gassed. Why Tony Ralston wasn't brought on at some point? I think that stops the winning goal. Uh, sorry, the equalising goal. Uh, do you know, I've only said winning goal because that's how they're presenting it. And it's not that. It's an equalising goal. Watch out for the headlines over the next few days. It'll be pitched as a Rangers win. You know, Rangers yeah, yeah. fall back from defeat and all that kind of stuff. But that's, that's by the by. That's for others to worry about and others to write. Um, let's take it back to the start because there's loads to cover. The the big chat in the build-up has been whether Callum McGregor was fit or not. We'll get to it in a bit. He clearly wasn't ready for this game. And I think we've forced the issue there. And yeah. I think the, the 11 that started, particularly based on the first half shown, showed that they were more than capable of this fixture. So obviously it's the same lineup as against Levy. And importantly, the midfield three remained the same, which was Tomoke Iwata, Matt O'Reilly and Dais Maeda. Usually at this point I ask you, what did you make of the opening exchanges? 21 seconds in. <laughs> what do you make of that? Rangers fans, who's your captain? How long has he been your captain? Why is he your captain? You know, he's given it all the, I've got it under control, <laughs> lads. And he did not. I mean, by this stage, he's got to know Dyson Maeda and what Dyson Maeda 
can do and will do, which is get pace on you, impress you. I think he's expecting his goal to come out, but I don't think that's the right call. I think it's totally wrong. So he's decided in the end that it's his ball, he's going to clear it. But by that stage, Dyson is right on him. And all he needs to do is, you know, he's looking for a break of the ball, not necessarily to end up goalwards, but to just be in and about the 18 yard box. But he hits it in such a way that it cannons off Maida's right leg. And the keeper's got no chance there. So, I mean, <laughs> I actually had my back turned. I was closing one of the blinds to, to keep the sun off the telly and uh, half missed it, got the replays. Just what an amazing start. So the second fastest uh, Glasgow Derby goal by two seconds. Sutton's was the fastest at 19. 19, good start. Um, it's a free goal, isn't it? It's, it's such a yeah. bizarre goal, but ultimately it comes from Dyson Maeda doing what Dyson Maeda does. And James Tavernier doing what James Tavernier does. He's he's complacent. As, as bizarre as the the final impact is, you know, the, the, the resulting goal. Tavernier's got so many options and so many things he can do better. And as you say, he's running back towards his own goal, giving it the <laughs> it's all under control, lads. Far from it. Dies made us right down his neck. Tavernier panics at the last minute and it results in a Celtic goal. Again, I think it's the same end at Ibrox where Tavernier made an asset for Maida's yeah. goal way back when. Um, so Celtic get that lead. What a huge boost and, and maybe an unexpected boost and all of a sudden it really, really quietens down the home crowd. We spoke in the pre-match, didn't we, about how important it was to keep the the home crowd at bay and actually at various spells, even before Celtic get their second goal, the Rangers were all at sea. Oh, I mean, so many misplaced passes, panic, um, you know, letting us in when they shouldn't, shelling the ball out. It, it was all there to see. Um, the only frustration is that we only took one goal from that period, one one extra goal from that period when we should really have had two, three, maybe four. Yeah, you do, you know, at some point you think that maybe missed chances would come back to bite us and at 2-0 there is opportunities to, to make it three. Let's get to the second goal though. In between times, Nicholas Kuhn is booked and I think as you pointed out earlier on, this has an impact. Nicholas Kuhn actually I think is unfortunate. I think he gets booked for persistent fouling from others, or perceived yep. persistent fouling. Carl Vickers had a couple, Johnson had a couple, Kuhn has one tug at a shirt and he gets the yellow. Um, then it's a penalty. John Beaton gives a penalty at Ibrox for Celtic against Rangers. I've got to be honest with you, I know there's a lot of comments coming in here about Beaton. I'm interested to debate that through with you, James. I don't think he had the worst game, but we'll get to some of the individual decisions. There was opportunities for him to go big, <laughs> go and be, yeah. go and make himself a hero in the in the town of Bells Hill, but he, he's not taking them. But we'll get to that. He does give the penalty. I think in the modern day, it's a penalty all day long. Goldson's up, unnatural angle, catches the elbow, and Celtic get it. So there's a there's a surprise first and foremost. How cool was Matt O'Reilly in making an answer, Jack Butland, in front of the England manager? <laughs> Sit down, Jack. I've got this. Uh, he's he's got a funny. Demeanor about him in these situations, or really, um, he looks nervous. But I, knowing him these last couple of years, I think he was very calm. He's got that kind of like almost a worried face, but he's just he's in his in his own place, in his own zone. A short run up, always hate that, always will hate that. But if you've got the the technique that he has to read it and just dink it down the middle, I mean, it's it, it's it's such a cool penalty. You know, you'd be looking for him to just drill it, you know, take pick your side, hit it high and hard, see what happens. He just went, no, no, I've got this under control. So, you know, a, a great player, a great penalty from a great player. Yeah, that's why he's Matt O'Reilly and we are sitting here talking about Matt O'Reilly. Okay. Uh, I thought it was, it was coolness personified. <laughs> With zero Celtic fans in attendance, 50-odd thousand, 52,000 Bears screaming at you to miss. I thought it was real class, real quality from a guy who's shown real flashes of quality at various times in this fixture. Um, Celtic going to pick up another couple of bookings. As I say, you'd be hoping for, for Celtic then to get that killer third, but it wasn't to be. Alistair Johnson picks up his yellow, which leaves him walking a tightrope, uh, and O'Reilly himself picks up one just a few minutes after that. Um, were you frustrated, disappointed, that as much fun as 2 nil is, that we never capitalised on that? Uh, 100%. I mean, look at the chance. Maeda in particular... When he'd, he'd done all the hard work and he had, you know, he'd, he'd got the angle right, he'd got his body in the right position, and Butland is stuck centre of the goals, and he can pick it low to the goal he's right, or he can pick it 
mid height to the goalie's left. Both of them are goals, and he puts it in the middle. And it, you know, it looks like a good save from Butland, but it's actually a very poor strike from Dyson. So that that one, that, that I think that kills it. If he scores that, that's it done. Um, and then Tati in particular, I thought was a really good opportunity where done a lot of hard work, got an opportunity, maybe two of really good opportunities, but one in particular where he just kind of snatched it short, really. And he, the, like the goalie scored against McGregor in the 3 0 game where he's used the defender as a marker and put it to the goalie's left. I thought that was on for him in the same situation. And again, 3 0, that's that done. And we didn't. So you're going to have time and you go, you know, you're going to take that all day long. But there was just a wee bit of like, you know, if you lose a goal early in the second half and you're, you know, you're in a game, whereas you didn't need to be if you score one or both of those opportunities, you know. And um, before we get to half time, or just as we get to half time, there's a chorus of boos ring out around Ibrooks. What does that say about their players and, and what they brought to the party? This is a this is a game from their point of view at home with the game in hand. As you say, it's a must win for Rangers, a must not lose for for Celtic. And I think they struggled with that pressure, with that mentality. We've spoken in, in weeks past on the on the weekly show about the difference between being top of the tree and being the chaser in, in second place and vice versa. Rangers with their game in hand potentially will go top of the tree and we'll see how that goes on Wednesday. Um, but it seems that they, they struggled with the pressure. That's Everything's in their favour. To come out at home, zero away fans, all the headlines about how good they are and, and what Philip Clemong's done. And they buckled under that pressure. Yeah, but, you know, they'll, they'll look at the players and the performance they put in. Look in the dugout. That was that first half was all on the manager. He set them up to be so negative, to be so defensive, to be so spoiling. There was no flair. There was no attack in that team. They were just looking to, you know, try and frustrate us. And, you know, in the, the, the end of a, a 2 0 spanking at half time. So the players can, you know, do better, of course. But the manager picked that formation and left guys out that maybe he shouldn't have, you know, that's his choice. So if they want something to blame for that first half, it's in the dugout, not on the pitch. Blame Big Phil. Um, they make one change at half time, so it's Seema who comes in for Scott Wright. Apparently, Scott Wright was playing in the first half, which is interesting uh, to read. So Seema comes on. I think he's a decent player. He's obviously on loan from Brighton and he's had a decent first half to the season and he's played his part as the game's gone on. But ultimately, the big talking point, and this is where I will concede on John Beaton's uh, involvement in the day, it's uh, Fabio Silva. What an imposter. First and foremost, yeah. diving around and you know, three, four times in the first half, he's gone down. Johnson's picked up his book and for pushing him somewhere near the chest, he goes down holding his face. You've seen it already, uh, you know, in his relatively few appearances in a Rangers shirt, and he'd, he ramped it up dramatically today. I thought it was pathetic. I thought it was really pathetic. And I actually think if any decent minded Rangers fans are watching that, they will also agree it's pathetic. It was just woeful stuff from a, a professional footballer. Somebody somewhere has sanctioned a 30-odd million pound transfer fee for him. There's hooky stuff going on. <laughs> Follow the money, because there, there's something not right there. However, in terms of the incident, so he's he's turned Alistair Johnson and he's taken the tumble. He, he's gone down theatric, theatrically. And John Beaton has given what, to my mind right now, is the right call. He's called it for what it is. It's a dive and it's a yellow card. The VAR being VAR, VAR gets involved. I don't know who was on VAR today. Walsh. Nick Walsh. Sure. 100%. Um, and you know how it works in the modern game. When the ref is asked to go to VAR, more than nine times out of ten, the ref goes with the, the VAR decision. So whoever's in VAR, Nick Walsh or otherwise, has suggested to, to John Beaton that there is actually contact. If you slow it down, and we, we obviously watch the replays as well, if you slow it down in the way they do on the VAR screen, you can see that contact. But the... The slow motion replay versus the real time, it's a very different thing. So slow down, you can kind of see why they've given it. But the reality is it's not, apparently. And it's a lifeline that Rangers really needed. I suppose what you'd say is football is not played in slow motion. And it's a slow motion that looks like it's contact. Um, and you called it during the game that the most pathetic thing about it is if Silva had just gone on to the ball, he'd a chance to clip it in, you know, and... Who knows what comes to that? You know, a chance for goal or even get a shot and goal. Um, and in a real time, he's knocked the ball past Johnson. Johnson's just put a leg out for the ball, not for the man. And Silva's ran straight at the man 
because that's the only thing in his mind. If I can get contact there, I might get a, a VAR style penalty. I think you're right, Beaton's called it right in real time. So where's the clear and obvious? Um, once you start slowing that down, get still frames, all these things. Is there contact? Yeah. Is it Johnson on Silva? No. Is it Silva on Johnson? Yes. Um, it's a very frustrating penalty in, in the modern VAR world. Is it a penalty? It's, it's the ones you see given, I but it's, it's maybe one you need to point back to IFAB and say, look, that's going to kill the game, that kind of penalty, because that's a defender defending and a striker diving, and you get a penalty and a rescinded booking from it. Were you worried that Johnson was going to pick up his second yellow? What do you make of that? No, I mean, it's, it's a genuine attempt on the ball. Um, that doesn't necessarily mean that that plays out at Ibrox with a guy from the Crown Bar the referee's jersey but so if, if you want to look at things through a, a less myopic lens has been got a chance to send johnson off there and could stand behind it and see here's why i sent him off yeah and um, would he have been wrong yes because it's a genuine attempt he could have got away with it if he wanted to be completely blatant but i think beaton has put himself under so much pressure after a hearts game that he couldn't really make another wrong call and it would have been a wrong call even if he got away with it. So I think that's part of the reason why he didn't. And you saw Goldson, you saw Tavernier screaming to go back to Johnson to get sent off. A couple of pathetic clowns, you know, really, really poor. Professional footballers, no chance. Yeah, I agree with you. Um, Honest John, is this what we're calling him now? John Beaton? <laughs> Jings, man. Never saw that coming. <laughs> yeah, you've painted yourself into a corner there. Um, two minutes later, Rangers get what they think is equaliser. Um we all call for it at the time. Everyone thought it was a foul on Iwata. Yeah. Beating plays on. It's messy from Celtic's point of view. It's scrappy. It's poor defending. Uh, Rangers obviously had their tails up having scored. They scored the penalty, by the way. I forgot, <laughs> forgot to mention. But they've got their tails up at that point. Um, and Dessers ends up tucking it away. But you thought there was a chance that they would call it back for Iwata. And the moment you've seen the first replay, you're just hoping the right thing is going to be done. Chris Sutton was very confident. And... Thankfully, again, they've made the right call. I'll tell you something. See, when John Beaton goes to VAR and comes back out, he'll need to make it clearer <laughs> what's a goal and what's not. About this. About this, please. He's pointing to the, the centre circle for, for starting the game again at two each. Thankfully, from a Celtic point of view, you know, it remains 2-1. But what's your general take on, on what version of Celtic turned up at that, se that second half? I thought we were very leggy all of a sudden. And from what was a really impressive first half, the second half is slow, turgid, um, slack passing and actually just a real lack of energy. Did they maybe put too much into it the first half? Did they gas out too early? Yeah, very possibly. You know, and when you've got potentially kill a game in the first half, then it'd be very difficult to tell players not to, you know, throw everything at it. Because if they got that third goal, we need the fourth. If you got the third goal, ties over. So I do understand that, but they need to. Have more in the tank, you know, we're what, coming towards mid-April, early April, in a long, tough season. So it is understandable that a second half where you've put everything in the first half can be a bit, a bit draining. But I think we need a bit of work on the, the mindset. Um, I don't think they thought it was done or anything. I just think they thought we don't need to maintain that, 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 activity level they were left the second half the first half off with and if they'd done that for the first 15 20 minutes i think it's a totally different game and um, i think rangers would have got frustrated if we'd held everything together if we'd maybe even got a third within that period that was my hope is we get a, a third in the the first 15 minutes so I, I don't doubt that whatever the team talk was from rogers such an experienced calm mature positive football guy it would have been right team talk but it's not really at home or the physicality has, you know, the depletion of physicality has has come home to to roost. Um, certainly, the subs were a wee bit late for me. Uh, at, at least sixty minutes, we were both saying, "Let's freshen up." Kuhn, you know, just in danger. He didn't have maybe the maturity to not be going for tackles. He's on a booking. Johnson's on a booking, but you know that was fine for then. He, he should have been off towards the end of the game for Ralston. And then you're looking at the energy in the midfield. I thought. Iwata wasn't as good as I would expected from him. Good at the kind of basic cam stuff, but not enough drive. Um, and Hitati looked gassed as well. So, yeah. Um, 
it's to be expected at this time of the season when we're only just getting a full squad back together. But it would have been nice if they just managed to get that first 15, 20 minutes. Yeah, I think you always knew get into the second half at 2 0 up. Rangers are going to have to throw everything at you. There's nothing else for it. So that was fully to be expected. And I just wonder if Celtic could have done more to combat that with some of the options on the bench. I understand you keep Hattati on as long as you can, but it was clear his race was run. And yeah. Nicholas Kuhn, he offered a mixed performance, you know, some really good stuff and some some not so good stuff. What do you think in general, um, before we get to Callum McGregor and, and Yang, what do you think in general about what Kuhn and more so Hattati brought to the game? First half Hattati, um, you know, what we expect from him or what we're lucky enough to expect from him, you know, really positive, a great out ball, can take guys out of the game and um, can, can set himself up out of nowhere for a clear shot of goal, which he did at least twice, maybe three times. Um, so really positive, but <clears throat> as you see, his, his race was run, but that's nothing to do with today's game. It's just the fact that he's coming back. Um, Kuhn, Celtic really frustrate me when it comes to Kuhn. Kuhn had Sterling. And he showed him he had him. And, and he did it against Livingston as well, Celtic. You know, Kuhn's got his left back tied in all sorts of trouble. And they're not feeding him. When your winger is the fullback all over the place, feed the winger. He's got to throw legs out. He's got to stand off him. He can't throw challenges in. It creates opportunities. And it gives the winger more and more confidence to just keep going at him. I think we could have shot ourselves in the foot by not feeding Kuhn enough. Because he had Sterling. No bother. You've also got a situation there where Sterling isn't a natural left back. He had, he had an okay kind of game for Rangers, but more so because we allowed him to have that kind of game. Surely you've got to put pressure on the non left back at left back and really see what he's made of and see exactly how he stands up to the challenge. And I don't think we've done that enough. I would agree with that. Um, it's Yang and McGregor that comes on, and there are further changes beyond that. Ida comes on in the 69th minute around about the same time where Maeda picks up his yellow card. Things, as, as we said there, at that point for Celtic, just aren't quite clicking. And what became apparent pretty early on to me is that Callum McGregor wasn't ready. Oh. I think it's forced the issue because he is Callum McGregor. But I think ultimately it's a, it's a move that actually could have backfired more than it did. But Callum McGregor is the one who's slack in possession and the move that leads to Rangers equaliser, the 2-2 equaliser. He's gifted it cheaply across the park. There's still a bit of a way to go, but ultimately it's it's everything you'd expect McGregor not to do. He's usually got the composure to move out the other side, open the play and take his forward. What do you think about his inclusion um, in the part he played at that point? So your, your alternative was to say McGregor out of the squad, Kelly in the squad, Bernardo on at that point. <clears throat> it's a wee bit 2020 hindsight for me. Um, hindsight, you know, James. <laughs> was that? It's a hindsight shot. It's a post-match. Hindsight shot. Aye, but you can't, you can't take the hindsight stuff and stick it to the start of the 90 minutes. Um, I'll always say with Callum McGregor, it's a gamble worth taking and the gamble didn't pay off. Simple as that. So they must have felt that the markers he was hitting in his sports signs were enough to give us 30 minutes. And, and they weren't. Before the uh, Seamers goal, you saw, I think you actually said the very words, to a caravan. Um, McGregor was coming from our halfway line to our left back position, that kind of thing. Tracking a guy, maybe tracking Camwell or something like that. And he was nowhere near it. And you knew at that point, that is a serious danger. And I know it's, it would never, ever happen. But see if, you, if the sports science guys have said, yep, this guy is ready, he can play this much. And then he gets on the pitch and he does that. You realise there and then that he's not ready. Do you sub him? You don't, right? No. But but is it the right thing to sub him? Maybe. Because he's going to cost you. And he did cost you thereafter. The, the thing is, he will have been deemed physically fit. But this is where the age-old term match fitness comes into play. right? He's good yeah. to go. He's got no tears. I don't think he's physically fit in terms of oxygen. In terms of getting about. Well, that, that's the match fitness. But, so he's, he'd have passed any fitness test put to him pre-match. But that's one thing. Getting up to speed with a game, which was pretty high intensity at that point as another, and I think he struggled with that. But to your point, is it a gamble worth taking? Yes, it is. If somebody says to you at 65, you can throw on Callum or you can throw on, at that time, Bernardo or Daniel Kelly or, or an alternative, you throw on Callum McGregor and you take the risk. And that's the that's the roll of the dice that Brendan Rodgers has made historically at Ibrox. He obviously made that huge call back in the day when he brings on Odson Edward when you've got a man sent off and Simunovic at the time. 
And these are the decisions that managers make. And I quite like the the positivity of making that change because you could make a safer substitution and, and sit tight. I think he, he took a gamble, nearly cost us, but it's also the kind of gamble that on another day wins you the game. Uh, so as I say, Rangers get their equaliser. What's the time in there? 86 minutes. Um, and you're pretty down at that point because you're very close to holding on. You certainly don't expect what happens next. Now, I've just mentioned Paolo Bernardo there and the fact that McGregor maybe on paper would be a better alternative. You've got to give Paolo Bernardo real credit for the part yeah, he plays in really the for Celtic. Gets it on the left-hand side, some really good feet, drives into a good space, and then it's what you're going to do with it. What's your pass going to look like? He finds either, is he in the box or just in the box at the time? It looks like the chance is lost, but really good feet by Ida. And it's a huge goal for Celtic. And actually, if Celtic don't get that goal at that point and it remains two each, do you run the risk of, of losing that game of football? Yes, it would have been amazing to win, but that's the goal that, that could potentially change the whole landscape of this title race. I, I mean, that could be a, a league winning goal. Simple as that. At two each, momentum such a huge thing in football, as we know. My my best hope at two each was to hold on, and I didn't fancy it um, because we'd been up against it for the whole of the second half. And once you've got that momentum confirmed against you, you're just you know it's siege stuff. Um, so to get that, I mean that that was a goal from nowhere. If you're going to be honest about it, I didn't really see much positivity in terms of attacking play in the second half. So to get that, you know, look, you've got talented guys there. That's the big difference. Paul Bernardo's a talented footballer. Maybe he doesn't show it enough. Maybe that's something we can coach into him is the consistency. And Ida knows where the goal is. So you've got quality footballers. And when, you, and when you've got that, you've always got a chance. And it's excellent. It's really clever play from Bernardo. He's really strong as well to, to hold the ball, but then to wait and wait and wait. And then when Ida's made the right move, he's been bang, there you go. Ida has so much work still to do, holding off two defenders and you know, getting past the goalie. And he does it and... At that point, you're going, that's it. That's not just today, that's the league one. Because if we won the day, that's the league one. And, you know, we'll come on it, obviously, that it wasn't. But, geez, we blew the roof off. My apologies to the neighbours in, uh, in this environment. But we blew the roof off. Yeah, briefly so. You know, it's a, it's a late goal that you think is going to get you three points. Ultimately, it's the goal that makes sure that you, you do get one point and that Rangers drop two points at home. We'll do if buts and maybes, and there's a whole lot of if buts and maybes in the chat. But as I mentioned back at the, the top of the piece, that goal and that draw keeps Celtic very much in the driving seat. And do you know what? Yes, we you know with a a bigger gap earlier on the season, but you take it. See if somebody tells you you've got six games to go, and the game against Rangers is at Celtic Park. I, I'll gladly accept that challenge, and, and we'll see what it takes us in the next half dozen games. Obviously, Rangers then go and get the third goal. I think for me, there's two guys um, that have fault for it. It's Yang, who I understand is a young player and not naturally defence-minded, but he's got to get tighter to Rabbi Matondo because you know where he's going to try and put the shot. The other guy is Alistair Johnson, who I think is really flagging at that moment in time. You were crying for it. Why not Tony Ralston, you know, in the last Steady 10 minutes? right back. Johnson had been booked and he was tired. He's put out a lazy leg, Alistair Johnson, in the phase of play, which Should eventually be, comes back. going at it, he's going towards it. Eventually comes back to Lundstrom, it goes out to Matondo. And it's a, it's a really good finish. You can't can't take that away from him. But from a Celtic point of view, we, we could and should have got closer. And there's a couple of guys at fault there. That's it. You know, that's the, the final big talking point of the game. You've then got, I, I call Fabio Silva, Silva an imposter. Step up number two, <laughs> Todd Cantwell. He wants to go throwing the mitts about on the final whistle. A pathetic character. A really pathetic character. You see him at one point talking to Callum McGregor. We'll see, we'll see. The guy's got nothing. The guy's all talk, show pony, all that kind of stuff. And it's shown by the fact that his manager doesn't even trust that they play him there. But he wants to go and do his thing after the final whistle. There's a wee bit of argy bargy and all that kind of stuff. And then the Rangers players go on their, their victory lap of honour. Lap of honour? What is that? And I understand, by all means, go around and, and applaud the fa applaud the fans that have booed you at half time, by the way. Yeah. Go around and do your thing, but show a wee bit of humility and show a wee bit of, okay, that wasn't great, but we can come back better. They've treated that like a win. I've not seen it, nor have you, but someone in the comments said that Philip Clement has, has suggested that feels like a win. He's also said Celtics wasn't a penalty, theirs was. There you go, big Phil, good stuff from you. But it's... 
does that not say a lot about where Rangers are in terms of their mentality for this title race? That they see that as a win. I think the word says, but in your location, you know, just the constant second best. If you think that's a win, then you're saying that just getting a draw against us is enough. Uh, I mean, I think it it forms part of Cantwell's nonsense as well. You know, he's, he's saying there was a kind of like um, somebody was getting treatment or something. That's when Cantwell's trying to wind up McGregor and given this and that. And given that McGregor's one of the most decorated Celtic players of all time, you're kind of going, okay, I think he's got the, the kind of medals in the in the cabinet to to shut you up here. But he's saying, I will see, we'll see. And then at the end, he's had a nip at McGregor and McGregor's just went, away, you just, he's peace. What a load of nonsense kind of thing. Because Campbell have been saying we're on top, you know, we've we've kind of won three each, kind of that. That's the mentality, the headspace he was in, and he starts something and ah, just there's, there's, it's a bit like Beal against John Kennedy. Didn't get his hands in his pockets, you know, not worth worrying about. But the the way that they've gone around the pitch and listening to what you're saying about Clement now, ah, that is delightful. That's music to my ears. I think Rangers' response at the end is an after the whistle. And the stuff that you'll hear from Klong and others, as I say, watch the media over the next few days. They'll be saying everything but a Rangers win because they can't factually say that. But that's the vibe that you'll be getting 100%. And I think this is the fuel that Brendan Rodgers needs. He's very much entrenched himself in the siege mentality. The you know We'll, we'll tell our own story, we'll, we'll paint our own picture this season. He was doing it as recently as Friday in the pre-match press conference. And I think, as I say, the players will be disappointed. They never held on for the win. You know, let's not dress that up. You know, is anything but what it was. But I think now that the next few days are so so important for Celtic and for Brendan Rodgers and how they approach it. Brendan Rodgers is a master of this. I know Brendan Rodgers has got some guys that still can't get on side. That's fine. That that's that, that's just football. Some guys are for you. Some guys aren't. But I think he's he's perfect at the man management. And I, th- and I think he shows that he goes to Ibrox again and doesn't lose, which was the most important thing today. And I think he now sits with his players. I don't know if they get Monday off, probably. And he'll sit with them on Tuesday and really galvanise what's happened today. Because by Tuesday, they'll have taken that step back and thought, you know what? Yes, we could have won it. But a score draw at Ibrox, given what's left to come, is a pretty decent thing. And as I said at the top of the piece, James, this is where Brendan Rodgers really steps up. And I firmly believe that his message will be, as it has been in recent weeks, this is all there for the taking. This is in our hands and Rangers can't do anything about it. No, that, that, that's why for me it's such a positive result. You know, it's the box seat. We're in it now. They were. Now we are. That's the best they've got with nothing but their fans. I think they showed themselves to be so easily spooked. So how are they going to be at Parkhead? You know, and whatever it is, you know, three, four, five, six weeks' time, whatever it may, may come to. And they've got to win. They can't draw. They've got to win. Maybe draw, I suppose. But you know that's our place. That's our home. All of our fans, me and you will be there. I'm so positive about today, honestly. I'm, I think we're, we're almost there. Yeah. So, in terms of what's next, Rangers go to Dundee. What a mad in that is, <laughs> in terms of the park. I've seen pictures of it before their game against Motherwell yesterday, which they lost 3-2. If Dundee want to guarantee top six, they need to either beat Rangers or Aberdeen, I believe it is. Um, they've got an extra game to play, and I think it's Hibs and Motherwell breathing down their neck. Bottom line is they've got something to play for, they've got uh, something to motivate them, so that could be interesting. But ultimately, what do you ask Brendan Rodgers about that just now, and I've not seen any of his post-match? It kind of doesn't matter to Celtic, because whether Rangers drop points or not on Wednesday night, that doesn't affect the fact that Celtic's destiny is still very much in their own hands. And again, just to repeat, put simply, win your last six games, most of which are at home. I think four out of six will be at home. Six, yeah. Then you're good to go. So what about the players then, James? How do you think they'll be feeling and, and what's the what's the key to them drawing a line under this result over the next few days? You know, getting themselves in the headspace that I think Rogers will be in and I'm certainly in is that they've just come away in on a massive result. Massive result in this, this title race. You know, if we lose that today, it's such a slog, not to, to write it off or anything, but right up against it if you lose that today, and we didn't, and the momentum's all theirs now. So get that in their head. I think there's some some rest required. The guys have put themselves through the ring. I'm looking at Matt O'Reilly and guys like that, Dyson maybe. 
you know, they've really put themselves on the line. So whatever the sports science guys need to get the, them fresh, you know, we've got a bit of time now. So managing the, the training schedules that, that they can be fresh for the next game because every single game is so important right now. And I think it's just showing the players that you've put yourselves on the road to the title and we're going to get there one game at a time. Yeah, and we'll glance ahead to St Mirren just in a moment. But just to finalise on today, who was your, your main man? Who who really stood up when it was required for Celtic? It's tough, isn't it? Um, I mean, obviously, Ida coming on, I thought it was outstanding, back to goal. Um, really, really hope we sign him, obviously. But I thought he gave us something we didn't have that whole first half. Um, I thought... Didn't get enough supply to Hugo, didn't get enough supply to Kuhn to count them. Um, Wata was in and out, Aurelia was good first half. It's funny, like you'd, you'd say, if you judge it in the first half, then you could pick out maybe four or five guys on the second, less so. Carter Vickers keeps things calm, got himself sucked in a couple of things that maybe he shouldn't have, but overall, he's the one that kind of, like, when they were pushing and pushing, he calmed it down, so that's probably where I'm going to put my focus. There's loads of folks, uh, generally speaking, and, and throughout the recording, have been shouting for Dyson Maeda, and I think he potentially just gets the nod. Um, AR in the comments says Hart and Maeda, and I think that's exactly where I'd be. Joe Hart makes a huge save from Fabio yeah. Silva at 2 0 up in the first half, and that was pivotal at that moment in time, you know, in terms of keeping Celtic in the ascendancy. And Dyson Maeda, we, we probably shouldn't even waste time talking about his technical ability because it's mixed at best. Sometimes it's excellent. Sometimes he overcooks the cross. He he done so twice in the first half. One across the face, a goal which Kugo might have got on the end of. Oh, one, yeah, that was yeah. yeah, that was good. Yeah. And one which is still travelling just now, I think. So that's just Dyson <laughs> Lider. But his first goal kind of a his first goal kind of epitomizes and sets in stone that relationship he's had with this fixture and with James Tavernier. That is it in a, in a microcosm. Just Dyson Lider presses, James Tavernier makes a mess it and Celtic score. Uh, and that will be a kind of something that follows those two players around. But I just think in general, the energy, the work rate that Maeda gave you, he he doesn't care that Angie's left. He does not stop. He keeps going. And it looked like he was puffing a wee bit, and then all of a sudden he gives you something more. So I think you've mentioned various guys, and O'Reilly for the coolness with the penalty, and Ida, the part he played. I think Dyes Maeda deserves huge credit for what he brought to the party today. Um, James, just to round up, as I say, we'll take a glance forward quickly. We've got St Mirren at home on Sunday, three o'clock kickoff, I'm sure. And that's the last game before the split. And we'll then find out the fixtures and they'll do their juggling about and tying themselves in knots to make sure that Celtic can win the title at Celtic Park against Rangers and all that stuff. But ultimately, all we can do at this moment in time and all Brendan Rodgers keeps... Um, suggesting we do is look at the next fixture and that's St Mirren on Saturday. So how do Celtic approach that? How do they feel about it and what are you expecting from it? Just all out, all out attack, you know. Um, we've got the squad back together that we haven't had all season. Um, it's probably, I said it to you during the game, it's probably a game to rest Cal McGregor. I think he's that far away. I don't think he's next game ready um, and bring him back for the, the split and the run in there. So we've got enough cover between Tomoki and Kelly and various other things. I think we can we can do that, but it's got to be all out attack, get those three points, and it's just that three points, three points, three points, one game at a time stuff. But you know, shows the football you can play because they've now got you know with Kun starting to to show what he can do, Hatati's back. You know, there, there's so much positive coming into Celtic right at the right time, right at this this running and so much depletion and negativity of Rangers at the exact same time. As Miff, Miff called it, he thinks they peaked too soon. Time will tell, I think he might be right. Um, but yeah, it's just one game at a time, get those three points. But enjoy your football as well. You've shown that you've, you've got it now, you've got the squad back together. So yeah, can't wait, looking forward to it. Yeah, very much so. And comment just coming in at the, the end there, just saying that Rangers have got one point from nine against yeah. Celtic this year. Exactly. Bring it on at Celtic Park. And that's exactly... Uh, how I think most of us should be feeling. Yes, there can be disappointments because you've gone from a, a win in position and ultimately you've drawn the game. But most importantly, as you say, James, don't lose that game today and you're back in the driving seat. James, your final comments? Yeah. Well, my final comments might be, I'm just going to check this because that number 87 guy's comments has said, it's put me in the mindset to check. It might be dangerous. Uh, I've only won one in five, if I'm thinking right. 
between the last run of things. Let me check that. It might be. They won one in game. I've done this before. No, 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 no. I mean the last five games to date. Oh, not okay. against us. I'm not sure. Oh, Motherwell and all sorts of ground. Let me check that. Anyway. Let anyway. Check that. I'll give it too many Stella, James. Maybe. But just, I don't, don't be despondent. All the fans out there, don't be despondent. See this for what it was. A massive result to put us in the box seat to win this title. Yeah, it'd have been great to put it to bed today and we would have, would have done if we'd won and we you know, maybe should have done given the first half. But think about what you'd be taking at nine o'clock this morning. That puts us in the box seat to win the title and that's where you want to be. I wasn't up at nine this morning, James. Lazy morning for me. But I, oh, I was up at half six. You've got... Um... You've got a situation in terms of the, the Glasgow Derby stuff. Rangers have now won one out of the last 10, and it was that dead rubber at the end of last season. At this moment in time, despite what you may read and hear and, and debate at different times, Celtic are the, the dominant team in this fixture. And I'm more than convinced that when it comes to the game at Celtic Park, that will remain very much the case. James, thanks for joining us here today. Thanks to everyone who's joined us. A huge number have joined us here in the live, and thanks to everyone who have done so. And for all the comments that come in, we really appreciate it. Thanks, of course, to everyone who continues to listen to us in podcast. We'll be back tomorrow night, Monday night, with the Celtic Exchange Weekly. But in the meantime, for myself and James, enjoy the rest of your weekend, and we'll see you guys.